Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the After Maghrib podcast. If it's your first time here, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, and share with your family and friends because today we have a really interesting discussion. We're going to be talking about all types of parents, toxic parents as well. Are you someone maybe who's had a toxic relationship with your mom or dad in in your early years? Have you maybe done something to them or have they done something to you which you wish you could change? Have you maybe misunderstood what your role is as a child or even as a parent? If so, then maybe this is a discussion mm. for you, brothers and sisters. Before we introduce our special guest, as always, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the esteemed Sayyid Ali Radawi. Assalamu alaikum Sayyid. Alaikum assalam wa rahmah. How you doing, bro? Alhamdulillah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Freezing. It's cold. Yes, it's cold it, now. It is getting cold, and it's getting even colder. It is. I was checking yeah, checking the weather out. Crazy. Minus five on on Thursday. Allah. Allah. Uh, I wish us good luck. You know, the day it releases basically. Is minus yeah, five. yeah. <laughs> the day, you know, at times like this, I'm glad we're in the southern part of the UK, yes. and I'm really glad we don't live somewhere like Hull. That is like probably no, uh, like some mountain North regions. Yorkshire places like this. Some people is like... call it Mordor. <laughs> like middle, of, <laughs> middle of nowhere and freezing but you know alhamdulillah we managed to save one of them from freezing and today we brought him down south where it's a bit warmer our dear brother Ali Haider assalamu alaikum wa alaikum as salam how you bro rahmatullah thank you very much for having me not at all for saving man. me from the cold pleasure <laughs> because pleasure, it was cold pleasure. when I left there in the morning yeah and now it's cold here and yeah. I'm getting told that it might be snowing when I'm when you return when I'm coming back oh my so, god Allah is yeah. so yeah I'm a little bit scared but alhamdulillah I'm, alhamdulillah We'll just be stuck at home and <laughs> staying up warm. I feel like it's been this has been a podcast in the making for a long, long time. We've been Definitely. waiting, waiting for you to come on I'm to bless us with your presence, bro. Now the honor's all mine, and um, and I feel blessed to be here. Well, and it has been it has been a long time in the making. Yeah. Um, but being in Hull, which is a dreadful four-hour drive away from here, um. It can be a bit difficult, but yeah. alhamdulillah, we made it work. Alhamdulillah, we're now here. We made it That's work. the main thing, and yeah. inshallah, you know, I'm, well, I'm really looking forward to today's conversation. Alhamdulillah. Number one, because we have Ali Haidar. And whenever yes. I remember Ali Haidar, I remember <laughs> Ali Haidar, ya <laughs> karar, Ali, Ali Haidar. So that's like automatically your number one. Yeah, yeah, Ali, um, but mainly it's because of the, of the topic we're discussing Definitely. parents and everything, and something we all relate to, because alhamdulillah, we all have parents. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. But we need to dig deep and understand what are parents. Yeah, mm. I mean, this is something mm. I want to learn and inshallah benefit from, especially you. You yeah. as well, Ahmed, of course. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Ali Haidar today, today we is have, like... We have a special guest. <laughs> but there, I'm sure many of us know you, of course. You are a uh, top three finalist in last year's Shia Boys. And you inspired mm. us all. And, you know, we had a great time learning from you. But for those who don't know you, and maybe want to get to know you a bit better, we're going to ask you something, okay? Mm. We're going to ask you to rank. We have a new thing now where we rank... Topics, okay? Hello. So I'm going to give you five <laughs> types of breakfast. Okay? <laughs> five articles or like things within your breakfast. Okay. And before I read out the next one, you have to place it in the ranking. Oh, uh, no, okay. So the blind right. rankings, basically. Okay. No, yeah, okay? Cool. All right. Say, so, do you want to do it? Okay. Father. On the mind. Go first. So the first one is pancakes. Pancakes. One mm. being the best, five being the worst. Yeah, number two. Ooh. Okay. Look, if Bagala is if Bagala with the hands there, it's number one right now. Well, let's find out. Okay, I'll do the second one as well. Yeah, yeah waffles. On. Waffles. Yeah. Four. So pancakes too. Waffles four. Yeah. Why don't you change one of them up? Chuck in, uh, chuck in Arabic. Yeah, okay. chuck in okay. okay. Arabic one. You know Mu'ajjanat. Hasab in Mu'ajjanat. What's what's okay. in the Mu'ajjanat? Um, Mu'ajjanat. This. I prefer the jibin one, by the way, the Jibin's? cheese one. Yep. Yeah. Me too. Where would you rank it? If it's Manaish, let yeah, me yeah, one. One, huh? One, yeah, yeah. One. Okay, so Manaish is one. One. Pancakes, Pancakes is two. 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 Waffles, is four. Waffles is four. Okay. Yeah. It's three on five there. I'll do one more than you you do the last one, yeah? Bagel or Dehin. Number three. Because it, it, it depends on who's doing it. Okay. It can go south. I agree with that. It can go south. 100% agree. But with I'm that. not going to rank it because I've only had it in. Karbala and it was like done by really Elite. trustworthy swimming in cholesterol and diabetes exactly. basically exactly. <laughs> in the heat made by the khadam exactly yeah, that. yeah. that's what makes it more delicious exactly. Exactly. <laughs> got all the nice yeah. Karbala is sweat yeah. Four. <laughs> Four. 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 yeah number three number three and, and which makes 
Ash Browns. Five. You're not a fan, are you? I like them, but I'm not. Um, and it's not so because they have got to make them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pancakes true. is worth it. Mm. Hash browns. But pancakes, do you like those like the little ones that you get in the supermarket or proper like American? Little ones. Yeah. Well, anything American is just uh, any upsized. It's too big. Yeah, yeah. Yes. A huge American pancakes, it just gets. And for those, one. there's a lot of people who will not know what Bargillo Dehan is. Mm. Tell us. <laughs> This is our so first, piece of, only, first, first piece of knowledge we're learning today. Is, I only recently learned about this because whenever someone would say dihin, to me that's Oil. fat. Yeah. Okay. Dihin means fat, mm. right? Dihin, if I'm eating, let's say, lamb, the fat of the lamb is dihin. Mm. Then I learned that in Iraq it means oil. Yes. Yeah. Which means bagella, which is like. F- an, a bigger sized fool of Lebanon. I think it's called broad beans. If I'm yeah, broad, broad beans. Broad yeah. beans, yeah. Yes. yeah. Uh, so bagel is brown beans in oil but it's got nothing to do with that because it's the beans and you've got they're boiled then you've got bread and egg right and egg and egg is fried in like deep fried yeah in the oil uh no i really want bro, bro, i'm starving <laughs> like 8 p.m and we're craving breakfast well now yeah. now i know what i'm having on sunday <laughs> oh, no. yeah, definitely. i need it but uh, the thing is my lebanese household doesn't know how to do it properly do you know where the oil comes in by the way yeah, some families take it to a next level. So they'll fry the oil, then they pour it on top. Ooh. Yes. I need disaster. Said which someone knows what I'm referring is, to. Is, you know, Every week. Lemon juice with it. Is that normal? Yeah, you squeeze lemon juice. Oh, yeah, the onion. Yeah, that, you'll have the, the onion have, with have it. The onion. And I was told, onion, yeah. I want to confirm this with Sayyid, if you don't mind. Is yeah. it custom to eat it with your hands? Of yes. course. Of course, huh? And it's a crime yeah. using a spoon or a using fork. A spoon or a fork. I would, I would not imagine lazim. Karbalai household munching with fork and knife. I've never had bagel of dihin with <laughs> No, I've never had it with a spoon. Shout out to the one person that I do know who's, who eats with a spoon. Uh, May Allah beloved. guide him. No, no, very <laughs> beloved person to me, an uncle. <laughs> Allah <laughs> Shout out to, to the uncle who told me. But they all tell me that you, you just eat it with your hand. I would actually, t- I would actually threatened, threatened in, in Karbala that if I were to use a spoon, because you're Lebanese, yes, and you know, yes, Lebanese yes, is seen yes. as like the, of the Middle East, they're like, kind of like the people that will use fork and spoons. Uh, you know, you're going to eat with your hands. I was like, I'm fine with that. Like, mm. I'm, I'm okay. Mm. Um, so yeah, it only made it all the better. One big senia, one big tray, all of it inside and everyone Everyone's just in. like. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Love it. Alhamdulillah. That's yeah. good. Breakfast episode. Breakfast episode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so w- what breakfast do your parents make? Oh, that's a good question. We can move into that. My dad... My dad, growing up, was known for his omelets. He used to make beautiful omelets back mm. in the day. But it's been a good number of years since I've had one. Because I've moved out, obviously, I'm, I'm now yeah. not living at home. But I remember my dad's omelets. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's time to, to rekindle that breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <coughs> yeah it needs it. Go to my parents' house for breakfast and ask him to make it. Yeah. What about you, Zaid? And if I go back memory lane back all the way back to memory lane you know you spoke about your father i remember my, my, my dad Allah Rahman, used to make beer to tomato mm-hmm. so we like egg scrambled but with tomatoes here like and there shakshuka uh, kind of thing or a bit different i have no idea what shakshuka is shakshuka is <laughs> like the um, it's, it's like egg and tomato yeah it's mix. like it's tomatoes and onions and you put the eggs in i think it's that's more like beautiful. an omelette sort of thing yeah it's like it's similar but 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 there's only tomato uh-huh. So I get tomato, then you oh, sprinkle some yeah, salt. Yeah, and you yeah, yeah, yeah. But one of his favorites, and I used to really like it, was called dipsu rashi. So you'll have like date syrup uh, with rashi. What's rashi in English? I have no idea. What's rashi? Uh, anyone know? If it's, if, 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 <laughs> if, it's, if it's what I'm thinking, is it tahiniya? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yes. That would be... Um, and you mix it, tahiniya. and you have it with the Lebanese pizza bread. Pizza bread. Yes. Wallah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wallah, it's delicious. I love gamal, by the way. That's like a gamal arafi. Yeah, that's <laughs> When I got married to an Iraqi, my whole experience of breakfast changed. Changed, yeah? Fully, fully. Gamar with honey, oh, and date syrup, yep. warm hummus. I That's love it, it man. That's Completely it. unbeatable. You know, just before we enter the topic, yeah. we're speaking about breakfast, and you said your life changed when you married, yeah. and you had a different experience. I have a very dear Khoja friend of mine, yeah. who I invited him over to my house one day. Uh-huh. And I told them, Habibi, you need to come for breakfast. Yeah. Mm. I'm here. I've told my wife, you know, let's cook this. Let's make this. Let's, let's make it royalty. I get le, when you come, please make sure you've had nothing to eat. <laughs> oh I mean, God. this is, this is like a king's breakfast. Atiyah, he came, he ate from everything. He was like sweating, panicking, and all was going on. 
like what's happening? He goes, I'm a Khoja. I don't know what, what on earth is this? <laughs> <laughs> For, yeah, he's truly, when he looks at Gamma, he thinks it's yeah, he's ice cream. Like, he's like, what is this? The spoon of fork. And like having cheese with everything is like, it didn't yeah, make yeah. sense to him. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. bless you guys, was, man. I don't know a, what world you guys are bro, from. It was a game changer for me. <laughs> we went from having cornflakes to having Gamma. Yeah. And it, bro, it was a completely different experience. But anyway, Alhamdulillah, we'll get into the topic. I like that. I'm, I'm definitely hungry now. <laughs> um, so obviously, look, big topic. Where where do you think is the best place to start in terms of kind of assessing and, and di- or diving into this topic? Right. Um, I think if we're going to look at it as 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 like a, from a scope kind of a way, if we just were to zoom out, mm. I think I think an area is to just establish a few key definitions, right? Right. Um, with parents, it's it's kind of either you get along really well because there's understanding alongside a lot of other things. Or you don't connect. There's not that one, do you know? Um, and 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 that and that often comes a lot from a lack of understanding. If you don't understand the person you're dealing with, you're not going to connect. Yeah. Yes, you're not going to connect. And interestingly, it's always a good part, good a good place to start looking at the rights of the person. Um, because a right, if we're looking at what a right is, a right is something that's put in place to regulate society. Yeah. Right? So the right of your sibling yes. is what regulates that relationship. Yeah. Right? You know that this is your older sibling. What regulates the relationship between your friends is that you're not going to harm them or say anything negative, right? That's that's what regulates the prosperity of the friendship. Yeah. And so when someone recognizes the right of the parent and oft- oftentimes the right of the child as well, um, there's more understanding of how that relationship actually happens. There's more understanding. And I think the best place to start for when it comes to rights of anything is Risalat al Hukuk by Imam al Sajjad. Imam al Sajjad has a, a dissertation, I would say, um, a treatise of rights in which the Imam السلام, goes through a number of different rights and detailed the rights of your tongue, the rights of your eyes, the rights of your hands, um, the rights of a friend who's si- a companion who's sitting down, so on. And in point 22 and 23, the rights of your mother and the rights of your father. Mm. And I, it's just, when you read what the Imam says here, I think, I think it's one of the most beautiful things. And we'll start with the father. Mm. Because inshallah, the topic on, on the mother is a bit more special. Yes. And yes. Unique. With the father, um, Imam al-Sajjad says, uh, the right of your father upon you is that you know that he is your root. Yeah. That you know that you, if it weren't, if it weren't for him, you wouldn't be, mm. the Imam says. And then he goes on to say, and you should also recognize that whenever you have something in yourself praiseworthy, that comes from your father. So thank Allah and thank Allah, Allah for him. Because anything nice that comes out from yourself is because of your father. And then you can go deeper about some other rights of, of, of the father upon the child, which inshallah we'll, we'll get to a bit later on because that also allows us to sway into a, into a different conversation. But as I, I wanted to propose this question mm. specifically about the father, right? How do you think that that weighs into a father, son, father, daughter relationship where they recognize that, well, hold on, I'm say you're very good looking, right? And on that basis of the imam, you know, if you find that praiseworthy, you should say that comes from your father, right? Say it. Mm. How would you take that? Mashallah, you both are. Very good Allah. Looking. So I, I thought you gave an example. No, 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 no. <laughs> so on, 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 how, how do we deal with that? If, you know, that's the relationship. Yeah, and if you ask me, I mean, you, I've, I've read Rasalat al Hukuk before when it comes to the rights of your father. Uh, many, many years ago, I hear in lectures and everything, and here, <clears throat> you've, you've bring it back to life. Best. It reminds you of a, a moment I was a few weeks ago. Mm. Uh, this is like a real life, real life event. I was sitting with a, a scholar. We were talking and we haven't seen each other for a very long time, catching up and everything. And he, he just start, um, and I, I don't want to praise myself, but he, he start like giving me a list of what he likes about me, or what he sees good in me and everything. Every time you say something, I'm like, hmm, 
that's probably thanks to my father. In my head, yeah. Allah al Azim, yeah, this is not even thinking. And I was like, maybe, okay, maybe I learned that from Baba. Or maybe, you know, this was like somehow during the upbringing given to me. Yeah. Right. And then after we left that conversation, I had, wallah, I had tears in my eye and I'm like, you know what, Allah yarham akbar, honestly. Yeah. I was like, because without your upbringing and without you being my parent as my father, I wouldn't be me. Yeah. I wouldn't even be worth that phrase that I think I'm not worthy of mm. for anyone to say about me. So that truly connects. And if this is the words of the Imam, there's true meaning behind mm. it. It's, mm. really, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. It makes sense. The, the, the father, I think for Sayyid and I, it's obviously like a very sensitive and close topic to our hearts because alhamdulillah i became a father in the last couple of years mm, said has been a father for a number of years oh, now five years and uh alhamdulillah, five and a half, we've alhamdulillah. we've we've both learned a lot and bro it's it's inshallah you bro you'll be a father to married <laughs> a father soon inshallah but it's a very first yeah married first hopefully inshallah <laughs> <laughs> inshallah i always pray for this inshallah a noble, noble wife, noble wife. Inshallah. Inshallah. Noble inshallah. 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 but um no bro it's, it's a touchy and a, a close topic to us especially and you know what i think we we learn about that relationship between a father and his son specifically from a young age all of us mm. um obviously <clears throat> observing our own fathers uh, i remember when i was young i mentioned this on the podcast before um i went for umrah when i was like seven years old mm. and i had a, a member of my family who was with me who noticed my style of salah and say, praising, basically saying, wow, he can pray properly. He's like six, seven years old. And he said, did he get that from his dad? Because I recognize that. And mm. I remember, when I was like a kid, I remember listening to it and feeling gassed, like so excited and so happy that, wow, someone's recognized how I'm praying. Thanks to my dad, alhamdulillah. But we even hear it in our majalis. We hear it on, on a day-to-day, year-to-year basis. Every Muharram, for example, we hear about Ali al-Akbar, for mm. example, for example, alayhi salam. And we hear about uh, Imam Sajjad and Imam Hussein. You know, mm. when they say Ali al-Akbar salam, was the most in resemblance to Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu oh, alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Yeah. How? He never, he never met him. He was born after the time of the death of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. It was because he spent so much quality time with his father, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, that Imam Hussein passed on the values of Rasulullah Muhammad to his children. Mm. And like you know i want to make this point like really abundantly clear firstly to myself and then to uh, inshallah anyone else at home who's... to me second yeah no yeah, not yeah. at all bro but you know spending quality time with your parents or with your children is more important than you think in fact spending quality time is not the same as spending time in close proximity i mean me myself for example there's days like days i get home literally after maghrib like it's <laughs> night time i'm tired i want to eat mm. rest and sleep yeah you know yeah. I, i'm my kids are at home i can spend time in proximity <coughs> to them but doesn't mm. mean i'm spending quality time right yeah so and that's where i think we pick up that relationship with with our, with our parents mm. and inshallah as we go on with our kids as well but yeah the, the father is i think all of us have a very unique place for our dads and our hearts some more complex than others of course um, not all fathers are present um, and and as compassionate and as caring as they should be. Mm. Sallallahu so Muhammad tells us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how many times in the hadith do we hear about as a father, he goes, your responsibility is first to the women and the children of your house. Mm. You know, so like that's a lesson for us because we as men, we can be, we can run our houses with iron fists. Yep. If yeah. We want to, but you know, we, we shouldn't be like that. Definitely. Definitely. I think every son and daughter as well, but I think it's 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 very relatable to the son. Uh, looks up to the dad as a hero. Yeah, that's that's Baba. You know. Um, they, you know, in in most households, that that father figure is that person where you run to when you are in trouble. Baba, I had an argument, or Baba, I'm scared. You know, or I did something wrong, or I did something <laughs> yeah, wrong. 100%. You know, and you're like Baba, mm. before anyone else finds out, <laughs> bail me out. Run. Yeah. yeah. What do I do? You go to him and you look for wisdom. You know, dad, dad, you've lived, you've lived, you have experience. How do I deal with this? And as you grow older, you only find that connection to grow old. And that's why you'll see a lot of narrations. Um, interesting also to how we as children should use, should know. And this is why we have the Ahlul Bayt alayhum wa to teach about every aspect of life. Yeah. Um, the Imams alayhum wa and in a number of narrations, the Ahlul Bayt, uh, they, they, they give you different um, time periods to deal with your children right mm. now i don't have a child yet so i don't really know that first-hand experience but i remember my father told me this this was like when i was young 
um, when actually I had done something wrong and he told me that the reason I'm dealing with you in this way is because look, there's a narration that says seven years, seven years, seven years. Yeah. Right. There's seven, seven, seven. And when we read the seven, 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 right. Seven years at them play seven years, you know, uh, teach them kind of be a bit firm and then seven years befriend them. Right. It's up until the age of 21. So I'm still in that befriending stage of my dad. And honestly, uh, dad, when you're watching this, uh, he'll, he'll know how the past seven years truly to me, when I look back in hindsight, and I know this is going to be, inshallah, like something that goes on for the future. There's that friendship really has been built because those two seven previous years were in, installed. Yeah. So because I had that recognition, when it came to, if I had done something wrong, my dad would kind of say, I'm going to deal with you in this way now. Just know you're going to thank me for it one day. And yeah. truly it's because I knew that I could have taken it two ways. I could have taken it, my dad's just, not dealing with me in a nice way mm. but i also say well the imams told my dad to deal with me in a certain way mm. he's not going out of the boundaries that he should yeah i'm thankful that there's heck man that yeah, yeah of course of course and that's why we see is like um just the, the dynamic which we'll inshallah get to um about how parents how children react to their parents yeah. is something that's really really vital but if you don't mind i wanted to ask very special topic to everyone, moms, mm. mothers. Something that is arguably one of the most heart-touching relationship a person can think of is their relationship with their mom. Hundred percent. I was reading um, a scientific study because I I had trouble sleeping, mm. uh, and I couldn't fall asleep until I would tap on my pillow. And then I said, okay, my mum used to tap my back when I was young to fall asleep. But I was like, okay, there's, there's got to be some correlation here. Let me go do some reading. And I did. And psychologists say that the reason that this happens is because it resembles the heartbeat uh, the infant would hear yeah. when the mother was pregnant. Yeah, yes. subhanAllah. So when you'd hear that heartbeat and you'd sleep in mm. the womb, you have taken that upon your whole life as something that resembles safeness or yeah. safety and uh, warmth. Yeah. So the only time I would feel safe, for example, when I'd fall asleep was when I hear the taps. And honestly, like the, there's a narration that says that's attributed to Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, as narrated by Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. He says that Rasulullah said in this narration, uh, someone came to him and, and asked, who should I satisfy? Who should I be kind with? Uh, and then Rasulullah says, your mother. He says, mm. Then who? Then he's like, your mother. Then who? Then your mother. And he's like, then who? Then like, your father. Then your father. Mm. So it's your mother, ummak, thumma ummak, thumma ummak, thumma abak. So it's your mom, your mom, your mom, then your dad. Doesn't put the dad in any lower status. Yeah. It just puts the mom in a really... Um, it's showing really, the status of the mother. Yeah. yeah. You, 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 you know, he's you, emphasizing three times. You've got yeah. to. Yeah. You've got to. Um, and then when you read the Risalat al hukuk it's so much insight into why. Yeah. Imam al-Sajjad, this is point 22 of Risalat al hukuk he will say um, that uh, the right upon your mother, the right upon you, the right of your mother upon you is that you know that she held you when she was pregnant with you. And that she would feed you from the fruit of the heart, which no one can, which no one feeds, right? Yeah. Mm. And then she protected you with all her organs. Protected you with all her organs. Yeah. And that she was willing to be hungry if you ate and thirsty if you, uh, for you to drink. Uh, keep you safe from the warmth and the cold. She would be in the sun for you to be in the shade. The imam is listing these out uh, amongst other things. And then he goes on to say... Um, she would, if I can just make sure of what the Crazy, imam says, he says, um, uh, and she would give up her sleep for you to sleep. Then the imam says, the only way you can show your gratitude to your mom is through the aid of Allah and tawfiq from Allah. Mm. That's the only way you can show your gratitude to your mom. Because showing your gratitude to your mom, and really when you look at the whole um, 
you know, grand scheme of, of, of motherhood with the child and the infant. You know, how much when you are sick, your mom is by your side. Yes. You know, when you're sad, your mom's by your side. Dads do do that as well. But there's that bond. We, we cannot do it to the same degree. There's that bond. There's can. that feeling. My mom always says to yeah. me, um, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're feeling. I'm like, don't do this, mom. <laughs> <laughs> How? Because there's that really special bond. And I look back and I, th I it's think... It's like a sixth sense. It is. That the moms have, honestly. It, it is. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. And, you know, you look at the mothers in the history of Islam. Look at the mothers. Look, look, look at what... What, what we have, mm. um, all our imams had moms, right? And all our prophets had moms, you know. Uh, Nabi Musa alayhi salam with his mother, very interesting story of a, of a mother-son relationship. You have Maryam alayhi salam with Isa alayhi salam, with the miracle that it is, and also a story you have Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam with Imam al-Hassan al-Hussein and Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam. And you can go on, and you go on. You have Umm al-Banin alayhi salam, and you just look and you're like, mothers are really heroes. Mothers are 100%. heroes. So how do we how do we show that gratitude? And once you recognize that I need the aid from Allah Azza wa Jal and tawfiq from Allah to show my gratitude, it changes the whole perspective. Yeah. Mm. Everything changes. Everything changes because now I'm like, everything that I do, is that enough? Oh, mom, I bought you a gift. It's not the same as I held yeah, five you can't, months. You can't repay that. <laughs> it's yeah. not that I shared yeah. every piece of food that I ate with you. It's not that I protected you. And so you, you, it's just something to ponder about, really. And the Quran also also says says this in um in a verse where um if I'm not sure uh if, I, if I'm sorry if 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 I'm not wrong in Surah Luqman or was al insan bi walidayhi hamilatu ummuhu wahan ala wahdin uh, yeah. Also a nice story. Luqman, his yeah, son, say, right? Uh, this is in Surah Luqman. وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنٍ فِصَالُهُ فِي وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنِ أَنَشْكُرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيْكَ إِلَيَّ الْمَصِيرِ Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Thank me and your parents." Yeah. 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 What? What? Yani it's that thankfulness, yeah. that gratitude, Allah and parents. And there is that if you don't thank your parents, have you thanked Allah? Because mm. there's that emotion, if you don't thank the, the, um, the person, have you thanked the owner? So you, you look at it and you just look at the Holy Quran and you're like, mothers, the fact that there's that miracle of holding the baby, that whole... Um, situation in itself is just a really holy spiritual heart. I can't find the right word. I'm struggling mm. to find the right word. It's unique. It is. Unique. No other relationship in any family dynamic Never. or community dynamic Never. or whoever you have a relationship with, nothing comes like mm -hmm. the son and the daughter with the mother. That's why I'm saying a bit of Hamak Mara Biyani Because they, 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 they took care of us they when did. we were a young age, specifically the mother. I think a lot of us really, it really hits home when inshallah you become a father and you see your your wife go through all of that pain and trust me as a as a husband or as a dad in that situation you really <laughs> you witness it from the outside yeah you know and not inshallah, just that sisters, you remember your mother that's what i'm saying yeah. bro it, like it makes you think of all you done it i remember yeah. when i first had my first child i said to my mother i was like did did you really do that for me? Mm. And not just for me, for all of my siblings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Subhanallah. 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 You know, Allah like, and then them. of course you, you have the mothers who um who go through so much for their children to to live a good life. You have, mm. you know, it's unfortunately some children who are <clears throat> who have disabilities mm. or, or per kids who are born in difficult situations. Mm. There are mothers right now we talk about in, in Gaza and Palestine. The lack of uh, support, maternity support there. Like there are mothers who are going to the ends of the earth to make sure that they can deliver their baby well and then raise them, you know, right. raise them with safety and sanctity. Like you said, that's right. such an important point. It's right. a very, very important point, but not what I'm going to be really honest with you. If you don't mind me kind yeah. of yep. taking on a slight tangent yep. in, in the West society we live in, mm. if I'm really frank. I feel like there are, 
there are two types of people. There are those who value their parents and recognize the status of the parents and parents who recognize the importance of raising a child well because they are very symbiotic. They go completely hand in hand in that sense. And then, of course, you have a lot of youth and sometimes not just youth, even adults who don't value their parents. The devaluation of parents maybe in, in Western society now is as bad as it has been. And that might be a, a result of so many different factors. It could be like the social media and children now, teenagers, yep. young adults who are just who who are lacking a pure and wholesome mm. relationship with their family, yep. particularly their parents. It could be bad influence, <clears throat> bad company, and yep. witnessing your friends talk back to their to their parents mm. or lying to their parents to get out of being in trouble or whatever. And, and those kind of challenges are still faced. I'm sure many of us, myself especially. There, there were times in my youth where I would feel guilty for doing something yeah. or, you know, or now I'd feel guilty, but at the time I'd do something because I wanted something for my own benefit. I'd do, I'd get away with it by maybe like not telling the full truth or doing something secretly or whatever. And the, yeah. Okay. We're young, 10, 12, 13, whatever right. it is, but maybe society has taken us on a bit of a different direction. Mm. And I feel like a lot of youth now have conflicted relationships with their parents. Mm. I recognize that my mother and my father are important. I still love them the most in the world, but the love I have for them maybe isn't what it should be. And that might be a result of my parents not respecting me, or I feel disrespected, mm. or it might just be because I don't see the respect I should have for my parents. Do you see what I mean? Yep. So yeah, it's, it's a difficult one. It is, it is. And you know, you mentioned like love and all, these are all emotions. Yeah. But see, I, need, I, I think what can control all these emotions in the right direction is if you understand the definition of respect. Hello. With your parents yeah because yani, for us yani, as muslims we sort of understand and value the relationship we need to have with our parents and if you don't inshallah it's an opportunity for you to understand inshallah. but yani, you can be non-muslim you can be christian you can be jewish so you don't even need to believe in a god you sort of know on the foundation foundational level what your mother your mother is to you or what yeah. your father is to you yeah but islam goes further because islam tells you exactly how to speak with them how to treat them, how to look after them, how to be thankful to them, how to be grateful with them. Yeah, there's like an entire encyclopedia yeah. just for you and your parents. That's yeah. true. It doesn't just say, sorry to interrupt you, yeah, but, yeah. but like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it doesn't just say love and respect your yeah. parents. Like Western, how to. Yeah. Like, like Western action. society is yeah. love your parents by buying her a perfume. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's Islam, it's material gratitude. Yeah, it's yeah. material. But Islam, so, no, hey. it comes from the heart yeah. and it truly means it. And you mentioned very beautifully early on a verse from the Quran. It reminds me of another verse where you, where you said, you know, where they put where, uh, being thankful is this hand, is in hand. hand in hand with being thankful to your parents. There's another verse in Surah An-Nisa where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he goes, and believe in Allah. Yes. And associate no, no one mm -hmm. with no. him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And be kind to your parents. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying basically, believe in, believe in the Lord. Make sure there's no shirk, full tawheed. Yes. Straight after that, and be good to your parents. All three side by side. You know what's interesting? It wasn't mentioned one time. Many times, huh? Surah Al Isra. Wakada Rabbuka Allah Ta'abudu illa iyahu wa bilwaydaini ahsana. Wow. Mm. And there's hikmah when yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shirk ahsana wa biril walidain, right? And then it's exactly what you were saying, right? So we have we have bir on one side, and we have uquq uh, on the other side, mm. right? You got mm. the two polar op 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 two yes. opposites, right? One is you should do because Allah has said wabid wa yadaini ihsan, so you've got to mm, goodness, yeah. kindness. Um, um, it's goodness bir. How can you describe? So bir would be. Um, goodness with your parents it would also be um there's a specific word goodness with your parents um feel filial piety filial piety is actually another term for it actually okay. comes from um chinese ancient chinese scripture mm. uh, confucius was a philosopher who lived back then and came up with um filial piety which basically is the idea of Birr al which comes from uh, Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and Ahl al bayt and of course the, the, the message of that started from Adam and, and goes on. Birr al mm. right? That 
which is feel, filial piety or goodness or kindness with your parents. That's on one side. And you've got the opposite. So anything that's not bur could be aqul. And I had the conversation with my dad. And I was uh, we were talking about this. The full scenario is, but if we're gonna be, if we're gonna be frank, yeah, the full scenario was. Spill Baba the beans, spill the beans. <laughs> Baba says, <laughs> not the bargain of the hell ones. <laughs> Baba says, the broad beans. Habib, Allah, can you please um, actually say Alush because Allah is Iraqi, Alush would be the beans. But I'm just so accustomed to Iraqi now, I don't say yeah. Alush, I say Allah. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, Baba, Baba, Habib, can you please um, take the rubbish out? I said, I'll do it, Baba. What if I don't? I had this one. I'll cook. I was like, let's have a conversation about this. Now I want to know. Because is that, is that, am I, because Bir al and if you, if you go into Bir, um, what's beautiful about the Quran, if we get just the Quran, this is without going to the narration of the Ahl Bayt, the, Qur uh, the Quran in the, the verse, Waqadar Rabbuka, Allah has decreed that you worship no one but him and and goodness with your parents. Then he goes on to say, وَلَا تَقُوا لَهُمَا Uf. Uf. Yeah. Uf. Yeah. And so Allah has set the standards here. Anything more than Uf, red zone. Red line. Wow. Red zone. <laughs> uf. What Uf? Baba's like, Ali <sighs> Uf. Yeah. I haven't answered back. I haven't done any. That's just Uf. Right? And there's only... Small number of letters, yeah. And you imagine different words people yeah, use, yeah. and mm. that mm. is, I can't do that. Imagine, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do that. And there's a narration uh, that even a negative look, neg which we'll get to, inshallah, in a bit. But there's the same polar opposite as well, because Biru al there's a narration that says by um, the Ahl Bayt, uh, attributed that says, um, I think it's Rasulullah, who says that smiling to your parents out of love is a form of worship yeah, yeah. that's do you get what i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. also that's just smiling or, or that's looking sorry sorry looking at your parents right that's so looking. by the same logic you could say in the opposite right for yeah, what yeah. is those two sides so said, Baba, okay uh, and i i come and i say i don't want to do this hmm. bad in was, it was just a conversation. It's not that I was test. I wasn't like because me and my dad, alhamdulillah, very good, very good friends. Open, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll chat. I was like, okay, so what if I don't? And we're like, oh, cool, because that is it, is it, is it not? Is it, is it not? So we went and we were listening and we were reading and we were doing. And I remember. Um, so you both like, collectively went to research this. Yeah, we went to go, to go see. That's it's amazing. Beautiful. We went Allah to go Allah. see because Allah. we let it. We let it go. Mm. <laughs> We'd listen to something. We like <laughs> okay, this video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be like, oh, no worries. So I go. And I went and I was listening to um, to one of the scholars speak about it, and he's like, "Aqoq," in definition, he gave it in Arabic, but we can we can we can we can translate it, is um, a situation or an action done that could harm the parent. Ah, uh -huh. intention, not intention, uh, physically, not physically. Ada mm. aqoq. Then I answer back to my parent. Aqoq. I've disrespected my parent there. Baba, wh wh why are you getting involved? I've broken that right. Mm. But the scholar says that you don't necessarily, um, if the father doesn't have the right to force you to take this decision. Mm. But then the son needs to also abide by what the parent says. Dilemma. Dilemma. Real dilemma. <laughs> and this was interesting because mm. in law, if you go to transnational <clears throat> and UK commercial law, and commercial law, or you go to maybe law of business organizations, not as much criminal law, law of evidence, you'll often see a lot of the time something called a duty. Okay. So the police has a duty. Uh, the police or the prosecution in criminal law, the prosecution has a duty to... Um, um, share all relevant evidence okay. with the defense. Yeah. Either duty, you need to. If mm. it undermines the prosecution's case, you need to give it in. Um, and there's conditions where they could breach that duty. Then if they, if they do this, say they, they didn't find it relevant. I mean, it might not be a breach of duty. Yeah. They don't need to practice it. Yeah. Mm. For Kulwa had has his duty. 
the parents have their duty. That if I want to go here and my dad's like, no, sit here. I have a duty to say, Baba, because you're my dad, I'm going to listen to you. Mm. But Suha, he has a duty not to do that at the same time. Yeah, do you yeah, get what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. But there's that balance of powers and everyone's got their own duty. But at the same time, there can be conversations. For it doesn't necessarily, and this comes down, what I'm trying to get to, this comes down to one main thing, which is respect. I was going to say mutual respect. It's got to be. Uh, it's got to be. So once you realize the right of the parent and the right of the child, and you look at the Quran, for example, where it says you need to, so it's must, and then Imam Sajjad along with the Ahlul uh, Bayt give you a number of rights of the parents. Mm. Now I'm seeing this. It all comes down to respect. Yeah. Mm. You don't need to have a crazy relationship with your mom and dad to have respect. Yeah. Respect is the same way you respect someone you go to school. The same way yeah, there's people that will respect their teacher more than respect their sibling, for example, yeah. or their parent. Just yeah. because there's teachers who are, who are a teacher. It's the same application. You've just got to do the same thing. Even the teachers have rights. When we oh, say yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 everything. You know, yeah. you know, you know it can get this is why this is where I think it gets interesting and really sticky because Alhamdulillah, we've all got amazing parents and I think we've been raised alhamdulillah in, in, a, in a really good way may Allah bless them but there's there's times where you come across these situations and things get really difficult yeah you know we had we were looking at some dilemmas earlier yeah and there are times for example where you may may choose to do something a certain way different to the way your parents taught you right and your parents may intervene and they say no you should do it this way let me give you an example if someone becomes a parent and they want their child to uh, have a certain routine. Mm. I don't know, a bedtime routine or whatever. This is a huge one. Yeah, <laughs> no, bro, this is a big one. A bedtime routine for your kid. Every parent has a rigorous, like, perfectly crafted and designed routine. Yeah. If you mess up that bedtime routine for your kid, game over. Your whole yeah. week is ruined. So, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. anyway, for example, let's say a hypothetical situation. Your parent, your mom or your dad comes to you, and in my case, let's say, for example, they say, Ahmed, you're, why are you putting your kid to bed so late? Or why are you putting your kid to bed so early? You shouldn't do th shouldn't do it this way. So uh, this hasn't happened, just to clarify. But I'm just saying, if it did, yeah. I'm in a position where I would think, so I, I have a logic to my approach of doing things. As a parent, I've become a parent. But at the same time, I respect my parent. Mm. I have a duty towards them, yeah. as you're saying. They have, they should may, you know, they realize that what, what they're telling me is not wajibat, not instructions, mm. rather advice and suggestion. And, and they may say, I'm your, I have wisdom. I have yeah. years ahead of me, I have years behind me and you have years ahead of you. So there comes a point where respect and, and tolerance is very important you know, to understand and to be mature enough as a son or as a daughter to say, look, Baba or Mama, I've chosen to do this a certain way. And this is mm. my reasoning behind it. I love and I respect you. But let me tell you why I do this. And without saying yes or no to them. And then as a parent, maybe you can reciprocate. Because I understand. I understand why I've chosen this way. And I, I'm suggesting this to you for these reasons. Now, that way you begin to understand each other on a more mutual level. And even if the son or the daughter does something different to what the parent may have done. Mm. There's understanding there. That's a big big factor missing in modern day relationships with yeah. parents i think that's a very important one because it may not always comes down to wajibat halal haram this that right. you know we all know the examples your parents tells you to do something haram you could that's the only time you can say no to yes them. okay but we're past that stage now right so we're in a stage now for example i i want to send my kid to secular school my parents says no send them to islamic school or vice versa what do you do do you get me so I think those th these are the situations which a lot of our youth find themselves in. Uh, maybe some of our parents as well. My, my son or my daughter has a, a way of doing things and, and I want to know how to go about it. But wouldn't, wouldn't that be down like to how the, it's communication skills? Yes, uh, yeah, 100%. I, I, I think that's what it is. Especially if you don't have like Islam telling you how to navigate your communications, you're going to lack... Let me ask you a question, Said. Go on. Do you think it starts from young? Like, yani, for example... <laughs> Mashallah, your father, Allah, 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 Allah. He, he, he must, the way you said, he, the qualities you have come from him. That's because he led by example. So when he was a young, when you were a young man, four or five years old even, he would maybe talk to you and say, Ali, this is why you have to do this, fold your clothes and brush your teeth and go to, you know what I mean? The, the communication starts from young. Mm -hmm. So you, you adopt that psychology internally. 
you apply it to your social life, you apply it to your 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 relationship with your friends, eventually with your kids, and then when your parents have that later on with you, they you adopt it with them as well. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that's really important. But you're yeah, right about communication. Yeah, it's nice you bring that up because now I'm thinking. Yeah, I need, um, my father passed away when I was 15. Yeah, I'm 31. So, like in my crucial years, between like say 15 until I got married, Mathelen, I think it was mainly my mum that that relationship that I had. But if I can go back early on, and you said you know from the upbringing, I cannot remember a time. I genuinely cannot remember a time where my father either forced me to do something or shouted at me to do something. Mm. It was all like showing or telling or why don't you join me? Why don't we do this together? Ahsent. Mm. Ahsent. Even like with telling the truth. You know, let's say I've done something wrong. Fathers nowadays, they say, tell me the truth now. Did you do it or not? Yeah. What was my like example? I'm, I'm not saying I'm unique, but I think it's a very good example to share and people can learn from. Can it's, I ask you to give us an example of something your father encouraged you to do or something that you, you remember, like he asked you to, to do something or to go somewhere or to say something which maybe you were reluctant to, but you did it and now you're grateful. Yeah, so I used to have like a, a jar where, where I used to get like coins and put money in. <laughs> and I used to be excited. Yeah, and it's big, it was a metal tin. Yeah. So uh, one day I cut it open just to count how much money I've, I've had inside. Yeah, and we've been saving this. I had one, my sister had one, everyone had like their own tin. <laughs> I opened mine, put it in the back and khalas. And I remember my dad came to put money in. He was like, oh, this is open. <laughs> Yallah, I would not own up. And then he was like, you're not going to get in trouble, whoever opened it. But and if you tell me, just don't do it again. Mm. And it was sort of, listen, what you did is wrong. Yeah. But I'd rather you say the truth than yeah. lie. Ah, okay. Yeah. Do you get it? So, yes. So th- I think those things become mm. very crucial as you grow up. Mm. Do you feel like How, you become like that as a dad? I think, kids? I think, yeah. I really do. Alhamdulillah. So that definitely has an... That definitely hasn't. Because you know when you said definitely about the rubbish, been. taking out the rubbish. Yeah. In that situation, I was thinking, oh, my, my son is two years old, so I, don't, I haven't given him that responsibility yet. But the time will come. But I was thinking, like, how? what would I say if I was a dad? Uh, that's a really good question. Ooh, Bo, Bo just asked me, he was like, Ali, can you? Yeah. Well, he was like, do it. Yeah. He was just like, can you? And it, of course, like, he shouldn't even have to ask. I, I, he shouldn't have to ask. Yeah. I should be accustomed already to well, and, and that custom thing, when you learn it, it becomes automatic. Exactly. It's the best. But if exactly. you, you know when you said to your dad, what if I don't? Like, as just as curiosity rather than rebellion. I was like, I was like well, no, I was like, well, well, what, what do you think? What, what do you think if, if someone, like, like myself, a son and their father, and I was like, well, well, I don't want to do that. Right. And of course, that in itself is disrespectful because I have reached my duty of yeah. listening to my father. Yeah. Why? What's my excuse of not doing that? Mm. Nothing. Well, it's two steps. Madbakh, uh, the bin, and I come back in. Yeah. Marco, Marco. Yani, I, I let my 50 year old dad do it. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Logically. You know? <clears throat> but I would have breached my duty here. You know? But um, w- what I loved about it from hearing the conversation now, it appears that it's just respect. Mm. Right? And I think that respect needs to come from the both sides. Yeah. Right? We're going to get into this right after this. Because I want to justify something. But uh, say we have a plant. Hello. And you've got a seed, you put it in the soil, it starts to grow. The plant needs two things. I don't know biology, please don't correct me. It needs two things. Has of my year five yeah, biology. Yeah. Sunlight and water. Yeah. Constant sunlight, constant water. It needs them in moderation, but it needs them. Yeah. Without sunlight, the plant's going to drown. Without water, the sun's going to burn the plant. Yeah. But once it's equally being put on at the right time in the right place, balanced, balanced, yeah. what happens? The plant yeah. flourishes, yeah. starts yeah. to make out beautiful flowers. Consider the plant to be the father, child, mother, mm. child relationship. Mm. And the water says that what you are putting in and the sunlight is that overshining respect that your parents give. Um, you don't necessarily, you don't come and order your dad, Baba, how you respect me? No, no, um, Baba, Baba, Baba knows how to deal with these yeah, things, you yeah, know? Yeah, of course. And I don't need to judge or I don't need to say, Baba, you're not respecting me. I don't know to come say, Baba, you're not mm. respecting me, which we're going to get into in a bit. For who are that shade, that sunlight is the parent putting on that. that respect and it grows. And those flowers or the fruit that grows is experiences. 
Yeah. Mm. It's experiences. So in, in the in the in the dilemma of let's say parent and child are, are disagreeing on what time the child's child should go to sleep. Uh, there's nothing wrong with. Wait till they get children. <laughs> he's he's going to come back. He's going to give us fifty examples. <laughs> it's, it's, but 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 to me, because I had this. Yeah. Okay. I was the grandchild. Yeah. <laughs> and I was staying up past my bedtime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my teta, being my teta, my mm. BB, um, I was always kind of like. I want to spend time with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just to stay up. You, is, are you like me? Like I, my love, bless our grandparents. <laughs> yeah, well, but I'm still, I'm yeah. still like, I feel like I'm my grandmother's favorite Out of all her grandchildren. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. Like, Can I speak Arabic? Like, my yeah. grandmother. Teta, اللي عم نحكي هلا إنه حفيدك علي. What I'm saying is that Teta, just know that I'm your favorite grandchild because yeah, yeah, we're yeah. having this conversation constantly. Really, yeah. I think I'm my favorite. My but you know, my 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 uh, my mum would always tell my grandma. No, sorry, my grandma would always tell my mum, "You're being too soft on. Uh, you're being too hard on Ahmed. Relax, relax. He's just a kid. He's a boy." Mm. My mum would discipline me, and or my dad would discipline me, and my grandmother would defend me. Definitely. The relationship with the grandparents—that's a whole different thing. May Allah bless them. They, yeah. they, you know, our house. My huh? cousins get so annoyed because my grandma is always asking about Mushtaba, Mushtaba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had this. We, yeah. I had a cousin argument. I'm like, who's the favorite here? In trying to because like our grandmother plays a big role in the family. Yeah, May Allah bless her. Yeah, um, she's uh, she's so loving, bless her, and she always has our backs. Mm. Always, you know. Mm. But everyone's always trying to point out, oh, like, I'm the favorite. She's asking about me more than you, so we'll text and we'll we'll say. But yeah, definitely, I think I was in that, and I would see and I would think they would deal with it really nicely. But it wasn't yeah. it was it wasn't a disagreement. But in the scenario that it is a disagreement, what's beautiful is. Um, what's wrong with having a respectful dialogue? Yeah, you know, it doesn't need to be argumentative. Can I ask you? Yeah. So you know, like, sorry, say to follow. No, no. Um, I was going to say, like, you know, when you, to the brother. You know sorry. the 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 point of what would I do if I said no to my parent? Yeah. Okay. And what would the parent do, for example, in that situation? If a parent, for example, Ali take the bins out. No, dad, I don't want to. I'm not, I know we keep coming back to this. And I know you took My the bins out. Gonna... I know you took the bins out. He's, he's raised you well, mashallah. But I'm saying, if in the case someone didn't do that, hmm. if the dad in that situation shouts at his son, you know, God forbid, raises his hand at him, you know, which is haram, full stop, or maybe even says, it's fine, I'll do it later myself. If you're on either extreme, then your, your son in that situation is not going to take you seriously he's either going to think he's an oppressor or he's a pushover do you see what i mean yeah. now a son this is my humble opinion at the age of 15 16 years old if a son is doing that psychologically he's thinking i'm saying no to my dad or my mom because i believe that i can get away with it mm. right so in the back of your mind you think i'll get away with it subconsciously that might be because of years of prior experiences at the age of five seven ten years old You've been able to get away with it, which is why the, the hadith on the 777 is so important yep. and to be implemented in the right way. Wait. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Hajj Hasnay Rajab Ali had a really good lecture on it last Muharram. Hmm. And like, I, we grew up hearing these, uh, this hadith dissected, but yep. he mm. smashed it out of the park when yep. he talked about it. Um, but it's, it's, it then brings back the thought, well, as a parent, your job starts from the day the child is born. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Not from... You know when they're old enough to talk and when they're old enough when they start yes. going to school and, yes no, because they learn from experiences and the way they treat you later there will be a result on how you've treated them in their definitely. earlier years yeah definitely. Do you know what i mean yeah subhanallah i think every what goes around comes around you know i was listening to say jawad Qazwini. he talked about the role of a father mm. with his children if he's got multiple children mm. he said if you as a father if your children this is about your siblings granted not your father and, and child mm. but if your children respect each other and have love for each other mm. you have done your job as a father and you'll go to jannah you know but if you're someone you do your siyam you do your salah you pay your khams you go hajj but your kids don't love or respect each other or they don't love or respect you you failed as a father and that blew my mind i was like subhanallah as a father, your job is to set the example, to be the role model. You're the leader of the house. And you should be setting the standard of love and responsibility. And your kids will learn from that. You know? So 
I don't know how you guys feel about that, but I feel very, very strongly about about the responsibility of a dad specifically. Mm. I know obviously that the role of a mother is so important. Inshallah, we can go into it more as well. We'll have a mother on, inshallah. We, ha- we actually have plans to have yeah. a sister on with her husband and to talk about parenting and, and whatnot soon. I think, but that's that's a whole a whole conversation again. I think I think that's beautiful. About the parents and the children, mm. what I was thinking as soon as you said father and children, I thought of Nabi Allah Yaqub and his yeah. children. Because yeah. <laughs> in my head, uh, the story, that's also a beautiful story of yeah. father-son. The Quran is full of it. Uh, full of these stories between gems, lessons. Oh, Ahsan and... al-Qasasi, that's, that's sort of Tuzal. Yeah. It starts off, um, it's a good these are the best. Yeah, yeah. Yaqub. Yeah, did, 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 did he fail as a father? Yeah, did he fail I, I'm father. not sure that's, that's a bit more. And to be honest, there's more than there's many examples of, of you know, from the first human being on earth, Nabi Adam. Yeah, that's from true. From the first, yeah, it's a good counter argument. But I think is it a more generic point that your, no, your yes, role definitely. as a father is to keep the harmony, keep the peace, and to be to to be the the one the protector, the the one who overwatches like a lighthouse. Yes. You steer the ship. Your home. You steer the ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're looking out for your family. You're protecting definitely. your family, and that's why we we'll go back to the hadith the Holy Prophet Muhammad said, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, about respecting the, the women and the children, and it starts mm. from the young age. It does. Subhanallah. So it's a very important point, yeah. I, I, I want to just go back on, say if um, a father breaches his duty. Right. Mm. Uh, and the son's sitting there and he's now hurt. <clears throat> very nice narration by one of the infallibles, I can't remember exactly which imam it is, um, who says... Two narrations. Imam al-Baqir says that there's three things in which uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not permitted for them to be, uh, let's say, broken. Or what's the word? Uh, it's also the F. Um, for them to be kind of like uh, gone against. Right. Right. Forsaken. Forsaken. Okay. Forsaken. <laughs> and the th- one, two, the third one is the kindness and goodness to your parents, regardless of the, whether they're good or evil. Right. Okay. That can't. Very your parents yeah. or your parents? Yeah. Another narration. Uh, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, if I'm not wrong, says, the prayer, Allah does not accept the prayer of the one who looks at their parents with hatred, mm. even if they've oppressed him. Mm. And if they've done volume against him, even if they do, wow. the look of hatred, you know, you just shouted at me like that. Yeah, that leads to Allah not accepting the prayer. And the prayer, Amuddin in Qubilat, and if it's accepted, everything else after it's accepted, that's prayer. Yeah, but yeah. if that prayer is not accepted out of me looking Nothing out of accepted. hatred, more hatred necessarily out of me, it's just like resentment. Resentment, that's the word. Yeah. You know, and you just shouted at me and I'm just like, like that, that will lead to my prayer not being accepted. That's scary. Yeah. 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 That's, and that's regardless of whether they've done volume against me or not. Exact, the, the, the whole point is, is that if someone struggles with their parent, remember, you've got a duty. You're on Mokallaf, you've got a duty. Mm. And if there's two parties going on here, they, your parents have their duty, you have your duty. The judge on the end of the day that's going to deal with the court case is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's going to hold everyone accountable for their duties. You've got to make sure. And of course, this, 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 this shouldn't become a <coughs> habit of saying, well, my parent, Baba, you know, you just broke your duty. Huh? You, you just, you know, you're going to be held accountable. More, more hit you. You've got to have that respect. Hopefully no one dares that. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> you yeah. don't want to have that. You don't yeah. even want to have, you want to have such love and respect regardless of what your parents do. And surely your parents are your parents. They'll have that in the rare case cases that that connection, mm. that emotional awareness may not be there. It could be that, you know, you've just got to make sure that you don't do anything to jeopardize yourself and always ensure that they're happy because, mm. you know, your parents, most of the time, a lot of the time, 99% of the time, they're not going to react negatively if you haven't done anything negative yeah. yourself. Yeah. You know? well, and that word happiness with your parents is so key. It is. Because رضى الله ما رضى الوالدين. Allah is pleased with you so long as your parents, yeah, your parents are, pleased. are pleased with you. Oh, and you know, I, asked, I asked my BB about this exact point. I said, um, what if someone, like in the context of this conversation, I said, 
What if someone resents their parents? How do you deal with that situation? She said, you cannot, you cannot abandon your respect for them and the way you treat them, the way you speak to them, you should remain nice and remain polite, remain calm with them, have sabr with them. The imams use the word gentle. Gentle. Yeah, have that gentleness, that compassion when you speak to your yeah, parents. Yeah. And then even, this is what she told me, her advice, even at that stage, if your mother or your father is still disrespecting you, or maybe they're doing a dhulm on you, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, this is in your hands. Ooh. But you know what's very important? It's very important, I think, at times to, with, with uh, like, you know, with everything being correct and not kind of breaching any Islamic rights or responsibilities, but to even set boundaries, mm -hmm. I really, be, I really believe that. And obviously, this is sensitive, but to set boundaries with sorry, your parents, with your parents. Okay. Now, what I mean by this is, for example, that we have like cases. once you have your own family, you mean, for example, it could be either before or after. But obviously, okay. it's easier when people move out of the house or whatnot. Mm. But there are people in our community who have been, uh, you know, God forbid, you know, abused by their parents, neglected by their yeah. parents. I know people who have told me that their parents would ignore them in school, wouldn't care about their education, parents who don't go to parent-teacher day, or who don't come to your sports days, you know, small things like that when you're young. They mean a they, lot to the child. Yeah, they do, because yeah, you does. remember that growing up, right? Did mm. my parents, were they encouraging me to do after-school clubs, taking me to my friends' houses, inviting my friends over to my house, small things like that. Were they pushing me to go to Sunday school, madrasa, or whatever it is, teaching me the Holy Quran at home? Like, these are, are for us, alhamdulillah, they were part and parcel of our upbringing. You know, there's a lot of people who don't have that, yeah. right? So when they get to an age where they are an adult, yeah, I mean, mm. they are past that age of 21 and they are, or they've moved out even for university and they've now discovering their own identity. They think, how much of that do I want to inherit and pass on to my children? They may even think, how much of a relationship do I want to keep with my parents? You must keep a relationship with your parents, but the relationship you keep with your parents should be on the basis of how, how much, uh, uh, they'll bring you towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because if there are if they are parents who are who are distancing you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala th I mean that's core that's the core principle of, of a parent and child relationship is that this is a relationship which is guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. and ultimately they a parent has to understand that and a child has to as well so when I say boundaries what I mean is is for example do not allow yourself to be put into a situation where you may react with anger with your parents cool. For example, you know that something self boundaries yeah, yeah, you, yeah, on, on your own self. Hello. On yourself, yeah, definitely. You, okay. You, for example, you know if you do something, it might provoke your parents. So it's like I you have, have situational awareness as you're dealing with. Them. I, I have yeah, a friend. Cool. I know I'm going on, but I have a friend who is a revert. Okay. Mm. He was uh, a Sikh brother. I met him in university. Mashallah, he was Mashallah. like a amazing guy. He converted when we were in university. He became Shia. Okay. He used to tell me. He used to say when I pray in front of my parents it angers them like it it causes anger within them and then i get angry so i lose my temper my mother or dad or my or my father so he would say now i have to pray in privacy or i pray away from them so i don't anger them so he's put a boundary on himself so he doesn't provoke or instigate a further reaction from his mom or dad mm -hmm. i think that's very important because not all of us have the the, the perfect relationship or even a, a healthy relationship mm -hmm. i think majority alhamdulillah do it's really important to mention but there are those who don't, um, and yeah, there's, it's it's a it's a difficult difficult situation. You know, sometimes I've seen brothers, um, like I would not know their dad's name. I just know them, for example, as Abu Jasim. Hmm. But you know, there's been certain certain scenarios. I've been to like my friends' houses a long, long, very very long time ago, where the brother would call his dad by his name. I'm like, Allah, what? By his first name? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, for me that was so shocking I felt like I was going to have a panic attack because you wouldn't dare do that to your teacher at school you'll call them Mr. I don't know with their surname of respect for example you do this to your own dad and I used to yeah, see in humor or they were genuinely no, no. Oh and, 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 the, and the dad responds <laughs> the, the relationship that they had is mashallah um, but it, it goes to show yani, if, if, if dad can't have a good relationship with son and son can't have a good relationship with dad you Bro, they will embarrass you in front of anyone. And for that, imagine your own son embarrassing you, being disrespectful to you, being rude to you in front of other people. Yeah. What's that going to do to him? See, you just hit the nail 
on the head a narration by Imam al rada alayhi salam attributed to Imam al rada alayhi salam i think in bihar al anwar i'm not if i'm not wrong um the imam says the right of your father mm. adding on to the many rights and specifically this just just to go to show you know the rights of the father yeah can be so minute we don't even recognize and it's good that if we're setting self boundaries um because when i when i first was listening i i got i was under the impression of boundaries between well baba this is my life into you no, stay no, over no. there yeah. but self boundaries definitely yeah, yeah. yeah but self boundaries need to also be kind of this recognition of what's what, what the imam says now he says the right um the right of your father upon you he goes on to say you don't call him by your first name Oh, he says that. Don't call him by his first name. Really? <laughs> okay. I've never like, heard this. Said. And then, I don't even think this is Islamic. I thought this is like normal no, respect. No. Subhanallah. Then yeah, the Imam yeah. says, walking in front of your dad. Yeah. Sitting wow. down before Before your dad. And bringing anything which can bring the people. Um, yeah, and it's something in, in regards name. to the eyes of the people. Something. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, and it, it doesn't say the word eyes, but it's in regards to the people and you doing something in representation of your dad. That's really basic. Yeah. yeah. That's really, in households, will be okay to, and I'm, unfortunately, if my dad's in the kitchen, I'm going to sit and eat. But so why? It's, it's, it's not, and it, it's, 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 you just, you just don't, so you, you don't, you don't, you're it's in that situation. Yeah. But that's the right, like my, yeah, you know, when you, when you realize, even walking, you know, in the human mind, sometimes uh, you're growing up and you'll walk in front of your dad and you'll become 21 and you're walking in front of your dad and you clock my back's towards my dad. Mm. Yeah. You know, that doesn't feel hit, right. Yeah. And the imam says that the right is that you don't walk in front of him. I have respect, even, this is like with teachers as well. Uh, you also see that a lot of times it's, you don't walk in front of your teacher and you don't sit before your teacher. Mm. But, yeah, and it, with your father, it's really special. Yeah. And the boundaries, um, it's it's nice to mention boundaries as well. I believe in a lack of boundaries. Mm. Not self boundaries, but boundaries between the parents and the child. Because it's it's what works. Because there when there's a, um, when there's a lack of boundaries, let's say, it allows for there to be clarity. For my barber knows that if I'm put in that certain situation, I might get frustrated. Let's mm. see. Just because of so much clarity throughout the years, where barber knows, yeah, um, I'm a, I'll, I'll give a, I'll give, I'll give a real life example. I'm a person in my room. If I'm doing something or if I'm praying. Or if I'm watching say, after Mahrib. or watching after Mahrib, <laughs> please do sub. Where's my camera? Please do subscribe if you haven't already. Um, or, or watching a podcast or writing my essay, for example. Mm. I'm really focused. I'm really, I'm really focused. Let's just say, if someone walks into my room really loudly and startles me, I'll just for some reason I'll get really frustrated because I'm on a train of thought or I'm really indulging a podcast or whatever after maghrib and i'll just get really stressed out like this just like i was really into that yeah i'll get i'll get part of it's like i'm just like you just you know you stun me but the second part is like my train of thought has gone everywhere yes that situation my dad knows that if my sibling who's younger than me were to come do this i'll get a little bit like tensioned up for who would who straight away just recognize it and we'll deal with it now the way it's not mm. i'm gonna like start screaming no no, no. It's just, i just get a bit frustrated same thing with uh it's like something... an understanding exactly my, yeah. my, my, yeah. my baba knows so when that happens my dad will look <clears throat> towards my my sibling and will say next time please not for example mm. for who he does it on my behalf mm -hmm. and with my mom for example she'll know certain things about me um my dad will know that and this makes things a lot more easy in the future yeah, yeah. it makes it a lot more easy in the future when it comes to for the shabab with marriage when you're open with your mom and your dad and you you come at a young yeah, but age mashallah, sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but you got a good relationship with your parents and and you're lucky and you're a good son you've got, mashallah, got good parents but i'm talking about specific when i say boundaries i mean specifically those who don't or specifically those who are abused by their parents bro there is a lot of parents when i when i used to teach in sunday school i used to have kids who would talk to me in in uh in confidence and tell me about for example you know how 
they would have parents who swear at them, or maybe who would teach them the wrong things, or who would abuse them, maybe hit them, lock them in the rooms. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, yes. these are extremes. Yes. You know, extremes. Or, for example, if you know that your parent is is sensitive about something very specific on yourself, you say, okay, maybe I should wait before I say this, or maybe I shouldn't do this in front of him. I'll wait for solely the purpose of keeping civility between one another yep. and not and not kind of making things like heated unnecessarily because that will then unfortunately if you if you get into a culture of arguments with your parents yep. and with you know just disrespect back and back forth, chatting and yeah. Bro, yeah. trust me trust me when i say this there's a good chance when you become a parent you'll be like that as a parent as well yeah you'll think it's okay it's acceptable to, right. to call your kid names or to you know for example a small example today my son accidentally hurt his little sister so I have a, I have a daughter, mashallah, she's, she's very sweet, but she's, she's under a year old. She's a baby. My son is a couple of years of running around, toddler, jumping and climbing. He hurt her in error, but he hurt her. Mm. There's a moment inside me where I'm like really upset. So I've only seen me in the past when my son has hurt my, my daughter, like what it does to me, it stresses me out. Yeah. Like yeah. You've got a newborn baby, but at the time, you know, you've got to think like, what can I do as a dad? To, to not overreact to make him think to for him to know it's not okay to do that but at the same time for him to realize that i don't overstep my my own boundaries as a dad yeah specifically do you know what i mean yeah it that's that uh, what was it um to reflect and to think what i was trying to suggest was if someone's in that situation yeah just, just as a proposal someone's in that situation not the best relationship with the parents the parents are a bit too rough yeah what if you tried to stretch that hand out first. Right. 100%. And were to sit down and say, Baba, do you want to do this? Really put in that effort, even if <laughs> yes. you're getting rejection Go to of the rejection. Of the earth to make it work. Baba, yeah. would you do this? Baba, you know, when you said that, can I know why? And that could be a part of the reform right. and, and it the understanding. Build, and then that becomes a bit more openness. It will start to create that relationship, that friendship, because every every person doesn't become a friend only until through experience where it's a bit rough in the beginning and then you become yeah, yeah. really good friends same thing in, in that rough situation so i was just thinking maybe if you know trying to the same way that you were saying that you had to think you, you had to think and you dealt with it in that right way what if the opposite side were to be like what if i deal with it in a different yeah and i don't make boundaries just because of these negative experiences instead i allow for more open conversation yeah. look for reform by yourself yeah that's um i think i think i think yeah it's really interesting it just goes to show that these are we we go through life sometimes we and we don't scrutinize ourselves yep. we don't have that muhasaba we don't yes. have self accountability how am i how am i treating my my parents my kids even my siblings right like there should be a continuous feedback report that you give yourself and you can even ask for the feedback from them do you feel respected by me do i treat you well because i think yeah, it's really you know, it's very yeah, important to have that. that that communication is so critical i think it's beautiful yeah i think it's beautiful we don't usually think about that as well. Mm -hmm. Not doing that. You know what has got me thinking, and I, I think it's like a final point from me. I think in the conversation is that someone may be listening to this podcast and he's thinking, you know what? Okay, maybe I need to better my relationship with my father or with my mother. But why should I? What benefit is there for me? A lot of people say like, what's there in it for me? And yeah, they yeah. probably. I, I'm not talking about re respectful parents. But I'm talking about the parents who have, for example, uh, been abusive towards you. Or some parents have been, you know, neglectful. Sometimes you can have a father, yeah, father figure, but he's absent 24-7. Mm -hmm. These things do happen. But I think it's important that, first of all, you build that relationship back yeah. with the respect. Yeah. No one's telling you go above and beyond. Yeah. But that most basic level thing that needs yes. to exist. Because I genuinely believe it and I've seen it and I believe in it. Mm. And I, will, I won't say I promise you, but I can guarantee you that the respect you have with your parents guarantees your tawfiq oh, the respect yes. you have with your parents guarantees the blessings and the bounties and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on you and on your offspring yeah we see it around us all the time and here we are saying Rad Allah wa Rad al and all these things Definitely. and people have the audacity to be rude to mom mm. people have the audacity to be rude to their father there was a story I'll end with the story Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh some of the companions came to him and they were like you know there's this brother he's on his deathbed he can talk, he can say everything, but he can't say the kalima. 
He can't say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. He can't say the most basic thing we all believe as a Muslim. He can do everything else apart from these two things. So he started inquiring, you know, does this brother pray? Yes, he prays. Does he fast? Yes, he fasts. Does he give his zakat? Yes, he does. He's doing all his wajibat. Now he's thinking, yani, this is Rasulullah. But it's not that he didn't know. He's trying to show everyone around him and for us the lesson to learn. He goes to him, go bring me his mother. <laughs> his mother came and uh, she, she says, you know, she bears witness that, you know, my son, Alhamdulillah, he's praying. He does all his wajibat, all his Islamic duties and everything. But... He neglects me. So Rasulullah tells him, can you forgive him? Can you forgive him? He tells her, she tells him, no, like God will be happy with him because he's, he's a good Muslim. That's what he done to me. He, he left me alone. Mm -hmm. she, did, she was a widow. He left, he left me alone and there's no one there. I'm not going to forgive him. Rasulullah tells her, he's now pleading with her. It didn't work. What did Rasulullah do? He told the companions, go bring some planks of wood and set it on fire. He sets it on fire. The mom goes, oh my God, it's too hot. What's going on? And he's right in front of me. He told her, although this guy believes in the kalima, he can't say it. He's prayed. He's fasted. He's, he's given his account everything. The fact you can't forgive him, Allah will never forgive him. So you can be the best Muslim in the world. You can read all the Quran you want. You can pray all the Salat al-Layl you want. You can be good with your neighbor, but bad to your parents. You can be good to your own spouse, but bad to your mother. You can be good with your community, but the worst with your family. Mm. Nothing will save you more than the love and the respect and the rahmah and the mawadda and the mercy you show to your parents. It's important. As someone who has lost a father, take this on board. Wow. That, that's... Uh, that's the reality of life. They say mother's because love, Because huh? when we die, bro, there's yeah. ihsab and there's ihsab. Let's be on the right side of the book. You know, we say in Urdu, we say mm. maki dua. Mm. Like the, the, the dua of your mother is not turned down by last It's mustajab, dua. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. And we all want the, the prayer of our mothers. Yeah, of course. They Who does it? Whether it's university, Mokhs. whether it's work, whether it's marriage, whether it's yeah, anago, yeah. ziyar, whatever it is. Allah will answer and show us that prayer. Islam, Islam says, Nadeef Karbala, the mother of the 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 dua the, the, the of the mother I heard when when Ali Al Akbar Ali Islam goes out mm. yeah. and you know Hussein Ali Islam says that line where I go back inside and give dua for I heard of yeah and of course um, the dua of our father and I think it's also maybe to end on a high note to remember that we as the Shia of the Ahl Bayt Alayhum Assalam have two very important fathers. For Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi says, I know Ali, Abu Wan Hadi Hil Ummah. Me and Ali are the fathers of this Ummah. So, how blessed am I to have two fathers like Rasulullah and Amir al Mu'mini alayhi wa sallam. I can't say it. Alayhi wa sallam. So, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, mum's dua. It's the best. Yeah. So I'm not. Bit, I'm not scared about my exams because Alhamdulillah, inshallah, mama was. Mama was done achieve, her. Alhamdulillah. No, and if you're, uh, I'm sure your mom and dad will tune yeah. into this episode. <laughs> I don't know which camera is going to be on me, but I'm going to say Ashtidkum ala hayat. Oh no, it's too, it's you're too. This kind. upbringing too kind. is what we he sets, need. He teaches us. Mm. Honestly, as a much younger brother, he's teaching us. This. And 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 and, and just the way you say it all and the akhlaq that you have and everything, I know definitely goes back to your father and your mother. Hundred percent. I'm very grateful. Of course. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can always make it easy for you to be in this character but the parents play a key role here and inshallah you know you give this to your offspring and you give the same vibe to whoever you go to and the way because now I want to be even better your, the, way you speak kindness, about, the way you speak your about kindness. your mother and your father may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and bless them even more and bless you because and your families and honestly your bro honestly we, we should all emulate the way you speak about them and they seem to be they seem to be incredible parents in the way they respond to you, in the may way Allah they look out for you, they guide you, them. they teach you. Alhamdulillah, yes, we, all, we all bless you. We, we have that with our parents and our grandparents. May Allah bless them. Thank you, bro, so much for coming. Oh, thank we you guys for having me. Not I, I need to shake this. Would, would, yeah, you, would you come back on After Maghrib? Yeah, I need... Uh, maybe.
<laughs> no, definitely, definitely. Abdullah, <laughs> definitely. No, lovely, Shout lovely Allah. having you here. Allah. Thank you very much for having me. It was an absolute honour. We learned a lot. I loved it. We learned I love you guys. Well, like, thank Habib. you very much. After Maghrib. Thank Habib. you so much. You guys at home, let us know what you think. Uh, we know we've had a lengthy conversation. We know it's been a long <laughs> one, but there's, we've, I think we've unpacked so many different topics. We've got into so many different things. I know we had even more to I'm talk about. I'm upset we're ending the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have to. Honestly, yeah, I am. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the production team has told us to, to wrap up. So. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thanks guys. Anyway, guys, uh, let us know in your comments how you feel about this conversation. Have you got a situation which you want to share something maybe you've learned from, a lesson which you've learned from? Is there a story in the hadith or in in, in, in the lives of the holy prophets or even the Islam, which really touches you or has taught you something about parents let us know say Ali any last words may Allah give you all the tawfiq and I pray for us and yeah please we learn uh, from uh, you guys uh, yani if inshallah God answers the prayer of your mother which inshallah he would Thank you very As much. You, when, if you pray for us, inshallah, all our hajats will be. No, we need your da'at. Da 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 yeah. We need, we need your da'at. I pray for our listeners and viewers. Thank you. This is out of your kindness. Say, Habibi. Habibi. Thank you very much. Habibi. All right, guys. Lovely to be with you as always. We will be back next week. Smash that subscribe inshallah. button. Make sure you follow and share this with your friends and family. Share it with your mother and, and your father. And, and siblings. Tell them that you love her. Yeah. And Bibi. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Tete. No, no. Tete. <laughs> Take care, guys. We'll see you next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.